Act One of The Alchemist by Ben Jonson. Argument. The sickness hot, a master quit for fair, his house in town, and left one servant there. Ease him corrupted, and gave means to know. A cheater and his punk, who now brought low, leaving their narrow practice, where become. Cosiness at large, and only wanting some house to set up with him they here contract, each for a share, and all begin to act. Much company they draw, and much abuse in casting figures, telling fortunes news, selling off flies, flat bawdry with the stone, till it and they, and all in fume, are gone. Prologue Fortune that favours fools these two short hours. We wish away both for your sakes and ours, judging spectators and desire in place, to the author justice to ourself but grace. Our scene is London, cause we would make known. No country's mirth is better than our own. No clime breeds better matter for your whore. Bored squire, impostor, many persons more, whose manners now called humours feed the stage and which have still been subject for the rage or spleen of comic writers though this pen did never aim to grieve but better men however the age he lives in doth endure the voices that she breeds above their cure but when the wholesome remedies are sweet and in their working gain and profit meet he hopes to find no spirit so much diseased but will with such fair correctives be pleased for here he doth not fare who can apply, If there be any that will sit so nigh. Unto the stream to look what it doth run, They shall find things that think or wish were done. They are so natural follies, but so shown, As even the doers may see, and yet not own. Act One, Scene One A room in Loverwood's house. Enter face, in a captain's uniform, with his sword drawn, and saddled with a vial, quarrelling, and followed by dull common. Leave it, I will. Thy worst, I fought at thee. Have you your wits? Why, gentlemen, for love? Sir, I'll strip you. What to do? Lick figs out at my... Rogue, rogue, out of all your slights. Nay, look ye, sovereign, general, are you madmen? Oh, let the wild sheep loose. I'll gum your silks with good strong water an you come. Will you have the neighbours hear you? Will you betray all? Hark, I hear somebody. Sir, I shall mar all that the tailor is made if you approach. You most notorious whelp, you insolent slave, dare you do this? Yes, faith, yes, faith. Why, who am I, my mongrel? Who am I? I'll tell you, since you know not yourself. Speak lower, rogue. Yes, you were once, times not long past, the good, honest, plain, livery three-pound thrum that kept your master's worship's house here in the friars for the vacations. Will you be so loud? Since, by my means, translated suburb captain. By your means, Dr. Dog. Within man's memory all this I speak of. Why, I pray you, have I been countenanced by you, or you by me? Do but collect, sir, where I met you first. I do not hear well. None of this, I think it. But I shall put you in mind, sir, at Pie Corner, taking your meal of steam in from Cook's stalls, where, like the father of hunger, you did walk piteously costive with your pinched horn-nose and your complexion of the Roman wash, stuck full of black and melancholic worms, like powder-corn shot at the artillery yard. I wish you could advance your voice a little. When you went pinned up in the several rags you had raked and picked from dunghills before day, your feet in mouldy slippers for your kibes, a felt of rug, and a thin threadened cloak, that scarce would cover your no buttocks. So, sir when all your alchemy and your algebra your minerals vegetables and animals your conjuring cousining and your dozen of trades could not relieve your core with so much linen as would make you tender but to see a fire 
I give you countenance credit for your coals, your stills, your glasses, your materials, built you a furnace, drew you customers, advanced all your black arts, lent you beside a home to practice in. Your master's house? Where you have studied the more thriving skill of Baudry sense. Yes, in your master's house. You and the rats there kept possession. Make it not strange. I know you were one could keep the buttery hatch still locked and save the chippings, sell the dole beer to aquavitae men, the which, together with your Christmas veils at post and pair, your letting out of counters, made you a pretty stock, some twenty marks, and gave you credit to converse with cobwebs, here since your mistress's death hath broke up house. You might talk softlier, rascal. No, you scarab. I'll thunder you in pieces. I will teach you how to beware to tempt a fury again, that carries tempest in his hand and voice. The place has made you valiant. No, your clothes. Thou vermin, have I ta'en thee out of dung, so poor, so wretched, when no living thing would keep thee company but a spider, or worse, raised thee from brooms and dust and watering-pots, sublimed thee and exalted thee, and fixed thee in the third region, called our state a grace, wrought thee to spirit, to quintessence, with pains would twice have won me the philosopher's work, put thee in words and fashion, made thee fit for more than ordinary fellowships, given thee thy oaths, thy quarrelling dimensions, thy rules to cheat at horse-race, cockpit, cards, dice, or whatever gallant tincture else, made thee a second in mine own great art. And have I this for thanks? Do you rebel? Do you fly out in the projection? Would you be gone now? Gentlemen, what mean you? Will you mar all? Slave, thou hadst had no name. Will you undo yourselves with civil war? Never had been known, past equi clebanum, the heat of horse-dung, underground, in cellars, or an alehouse darker than deaf John's, been lost to all mankind but laundresses and tapsters, had not I been. Do you know who hears you, sovereign? Sir. Nay, general, I thought you were civil. I shall turn desperate if you grow thus loud. And hang thyself, I can not. Hang thee, Collier, and all thy pots and pans in picture I will, since thou hast moved me. Oh, this will o'erthrow all. Write thee up, bottom Pauls. Have all thy tricks of cozening with a hollow coal, dust, scrapings, searching for things lost, with a sieve and shears, erecting figures in your rows of houses, taking in of shadows with a glass, told in red letters, and a face cut for thee, worse than Gremio Ratsy's. Are you sound? Have you your senses, masters? I will have a book, but barely reckoning thy impostures, shall prove a true philosopher's stone to printers. Away, you trencher rascal! Out, you dog-leech, the vomit of all prisons! Will you be your own destructions, gentlemen? Still spewed out for lying too heavy on the basket. Cheater! Bod! Cowherd! Conjurer! Cut-purse! Witch! Oh, me! We are ruined, lost! Have you no more regard to your reputations? Where's your judgment? Slight, have yet some care of me, of your republic. Away, this rock. I'll bring thee, Rome, within the statute of sorcery, Tricissimo Tertio of Henry the Eighth. Ay, and perhaps thy neck within a noose, for laundering gold and barbing it. Snatches face is sword. You'll bring your head within a coxcomb, will you? And you, sir, with your men strew. Dashes Suttles vile out of his hand. Gather it up. It's death. You abominable pair of stinkards! Leave off your barking and grow one again, or by the light that shines I'll cut your throats. I'll not be made a prey unto the marshal, for ne'er a snarling dog bolt of you both. Have you together cousined all this while, and all the world, and shall it now be said you've made most courteous shift to cousin yourselves? You will accuse him, you will bring him in within the statute. Who shall take your word? A whoreson, upstart, apocryphal captain, whom not a Puritan in Blackfriars will trust so much as for a feather. And you, too, will give the cause forsooth, 
you will insult and claim a primacy in the divisions you must be chief as if you only had the powder to project with and the work were not begun out of equality the venture tripartite all things in common without priority s death you perpetual curs fall to your couples again and cousin kindly and heartily and lovingly as you should and lose not the beginning of a term or by this hand i shall grow factious too and take my part and quit you tis his fault he ever murmurs and objects his pains and says the weight of all lies upon him why so it does how does it do not we sustain our parts yes but they are not equal why if your part exceed to-day i hope ours may to-morrow match it ay they may may murmuring mastiff ay and do death on me help me to throttle him seizes subtle by the throat dorothy mistress dorothy odds precious i'll do anything what do you mean because of your fermentation and sibation not i by heaven your soul and luna help me what i were hanged then i'll conform myself will you sir do so then and quickly swear what should i swear to leave your faction sir and labour kindly in the common work let me not breathe if i meant aught beside i only use those speeches as a spur to him i hope we need no spurs sir do we slid prove to-day who shall sharp best agreed yes and work close and friendly slight the knot shall grow the stronger for this breach with me they shake hands why so my good baboons shall we go make a sort of sober scurvy precise neighbours that scarce have smiled twice since the king came in a feast of laughter at our follies rascals would run themselves from breath to see me ride or you to have but a hole to thrust your heads in for which you should pay ear rent no agree and may don provost ride a feasting long in his old velvet jerkin and stained scarfs my noble sovereign and worthy general ere we contribute a new cruel garter to his most worsted worship royal doll spoken like claridiana and thyself for which at supper thou shalt sit in triumph and not be styled doll common but doll proper doll singular the longest cut at night shall draw thee for his doll particular bell rings without who's that one rings to the window doll exit doll pray heaven the master do not trouble us this quarter oh fear not him while there dies one a week of the plague he's safe from thinking towards london besides he's safe at his hop yards now i had a letter from him if he do he'll send such word for airing of the house as you shall have sufficient time to quit it though we break up a fortnight tis no matter re-enter doll who is it doll a fine young quadling oh my lawyer's clerk i lighted on him last night in holborn at the dagger he would have i told you of him a familiar to rifle with at horses and win cups oh let him in stay who shall do it get you your robes on i shall meet him as going out and what shall i do not be seen away exit doll seem you very reserved enough exit aloud and retiring god be with you sir i pray you let him know that i was here his name is dapper i would gladly have stayed but captain i am here who is that he's come i think doctor enter dapper good faith sir i was going away in truth i am very sorry captain but i thought sure i would meet you ay i am very glad i had a scurvy writ or two to make and i had lent my watch last night to one that dines to-day at the sheriff's and so was robbed of my past time re-enter subtle in his velvet cap and gown is this the cunning man this is his worship is he a doctor yes and have you broke with him captain ay and how faith he does make the matter sir so dainty i know not what to say not so good captain would i were fairly rid of it believe me nay now you grieve me sir why should you wish so i dare assure you i'll not be ungrateful i cannot think you will sir but the law is such a thing 
and then he says reed's matter failing so lately reed he was an ass and dealt sir with a fool it was a clerk sir a clerk nay hear me sir you know the law better i think i should sir and the danger you know i shewed the statute to you you did so and will i till then by this hand of flesh would i might never write good court hand more if i discover what do you think of me that i am a shyest what's that the turk was here as one would say do you think i am a turk i'll tell the doctor so do good sweet captain come noble doctor pray thee let's prevail this is the gentleman and he is no caius captain i have returned you all my answer i would do much sir for your love but this i neither may nor can tut do not say so you deal now with a noble fellow doctor one that will thank you richly and he is no caius let that sir move you pray you forbear he has four angels here you do me wrong good sir doctor wherein to tempt you with these spirits to tempt my art and love sir to my peril for heaven i scarce can think you are my friend that so would draw me to apparent danger i draw you a horse draw you and a halter you and your flies together nay good captain that know no difference of men good words sir good deeds sir dr dogsmeat slight i bring you no cheating climb with the clouds or caravels that look as big as five and fifty and flush and spit out secrets like hot custard captain nor any melancholic underscribe shall tell the vicar but a special gentle that is the heir to forty marks a year consorts with the small poets of the time is the sole hope of his old grandmother that knows the law and writes you six fair hands is a fine clerk and has his ciphering perfect will take his oath of the greek testament if need be in his pocket and can court his mistress out of ovid nay dear captain did you not tell me so yes but i'd have you use master doctor with some more respect hang him proud stag with his broad velvet head but for your sake i'd choke ere i would change an article of breath with such a puck fist come let's be gone going pray you let me speak with you his worship calls you captain i am sorry i e'er embarked myself in such a business nay good sir he did call you will he take then first hear me not a syllable lest you take pray you sir upon no terms but an assumpsit your humour must be law he takes the four angels why now sir talk now i dare hear you with mine honour speak so may this gentleman too why sir offering to whisper face no whispering for heaven you do not apprehend the loss you do yourself in this wherein for what marry to be so importunate for one that when he has it will undo you all he'll win up all the money in the town how yes and blow up gamester after gamester as they do crackers in a puppet play if i do give him a familiar give you him all you play for never set him for he will have it you are mistaken doctor why he does ask one but for cups and horses a riffling fly none of your great familiars yes captain i would have it for all games i told you so taking dapper aside slight this is a new business i understood you a tame bird to fly twice in a term or so on friday nights when you had left the office for a nag of forty or fifty shillings ay tis true sir but i do think now i shall leave the law and therefore why this changes quite the case do you think that i dare move him if you please sir all's one to him i see what for that money i cannot with my conscience nor should you make the request methinks no sir i mean to add consideration why then sir i'll try goes to subtle say that it were for all games doctor i say then not a mouth shall eat for him at any ordinary but on the score that is a gaming mouth conceive me indeed he'll draw you all the treasure of the realm if it beset him speak you this from art ay sir and reason too the ground of art he is of the only best complexion the queen of fairy loves what is he peace'll overhear you sir should she but see him what do not you tell him will he win at cards too ah the spirits of dead holland living isaac you'd swear were in him such a vigorous luck as cannot be resisted slight he'll put six of your gallants to a cloak indeed a strange success that some man shall be born to he hears you man sir i'll not be ungrateful faith i have confidence in his good nature 
you hear he says he will not be ungrateful why as you please my venture follows yours troth do it doctor think him trusty and to make him he may make us both happy in an hour win some five thousand pound and send us to it believe it and i will sir and you shall sir takes him aside you have heard all no what was t nothing i sir nothing a little sir well a rare star reigned in your birth at mine sir no the doctor swears that you are nay captain you'll tell all now allied to the queen of fairy who that i am believe it no such matter yes and that you were born with a call on your head who says so come you know it well enough though you dissemble it a face i do not you are mistaken how swear you by your fact and in a thing so known unto the doctor how shall we sir trust you in the other matter can we ever think when you have won five or six thousand you'll send us shares in it by this rate by jove sir i'll win ten thousand pound and send you half if face is no oath no no he did but jest go to go thank the doctor he's your friend to take it so i thank his worship so another angel must i mustn't you slight what else is thanks will you be trivial doctor dapper gives him the money when must he come for his familiar shall i not have it with me oh good sir there must a world of ceremonies pass you must be bathed and fumigated first besides the queen of fairy does not rise till it be noon not if she danced to-night and she must bless it did you never see her royal grace yet whom your aunt of fairy not since she kissed him in the cradle captain i can resolve you that well see her grace what e'er it cost you for a thing that i know it will be somewhat hard to compass but however see her you are made believe it if you can see her her grace is a lone woman and very rich and if she takes a fancy she will do strange things see her at any hand slid she may have to leave you all she has it is the doctor's fear how wilt be done then let me alone take you no thought do you but say to me captain i'll see her grace captain i'll see her grace enough knocking within who's there anon aside to face conduct him forth by the back way sir against one o'clock prepare yourself till when you must be fasting only take three drops of vinegar in at your nose two at your mouth and one at either ear then bathe your fingers ends and wash your eyes to sharpen your five senses and cry hum thrice and then buzz as often and then come exit can you remember this i want you well then away it is but your bestowing some twenty nobles among her grace's servants and put on a clean shirt you do not know what grace her grace may do you in clean linen exeunt face and dapper within come in good wives i pray you forbear me now troth i can do you no good till afternoon re-enters followed by drugger what is your name say you abel drugger yes sir a seller of tobacco yes sir hm. free of the grocers ay an it please you well your business abel this an it please your worship i am a young beginner and am building of a new shop and like your worship just at corner of a street here's the plot on it and i would know by art sir of your worship which way i should make my door by necromancy and where my shelves and which should be for boxes and which for pots i would be glad to thrive sir and i was wished to your worship by a gentleman one captain face that says you know men's planets and their good angels and their bad i do if i do see them re-enter face what my honest abel thou art well met here troth sir i was speaking just as your worship came here of your worship i pray you speak for me to master doctor he shall do anything doctor do you hear this is my friend abel an honest fellow he lets me have good tobacco, and he does not sophisticate it with sackleys or oil, nor washes it in muscatel and grains, nor buries it in gravel underground, wrapped up in greasy leather, or pissed clouts, but keeps it in fine lily pots, that, open, smell like a conserve of roses or French beans. He has maple block, his silver tongs, Winchester pipes, and a fire of juniper, a neat, spruce, honest fellow, and no goldsmith. He is a fortunate fellow, that I am sure on already sir have you found it lo thee abel and in a right way toward riches sir this summer he will be of the clothing of his company and next spring called to the scarlet to spend what he can what and so little beard sir you must think he may have a receipt to make hair come 
but he'll be wise, preserve his youth, and fine for it. His fortune looks for him another way. Slid, doctor, how canst thou know this so soon? I am amused at that. By a rule, captain, in metaposcopy, which I do work by, a certain star o' the forehead, which you see not. Your chestnut or your olive-coloured face does never fail. In your long ear doth promise. I knew it by certain spots, too, in his teeth, and on the nail of his mercurial finger. Which finger's that? His little finger. Look! You were born upon a Wednesday? Yes, indeed, sir. The thumb in chiromancy we give Venus, the forefinger to Jove, the midst to Saturn, the ring to Sol, the least to Mercury, who is the lord, sir, of his horoscope, his house of life being Libra, which foreshowed he should be a merchant and should trade with balance. Why, this is strange. Is it not, honest Nab? There is a ship now coming from Ormus that shall yield him such a commodity of drugs. Pointing to the plan. This is the west and this the south? Yes, sir. And those are your two sides? Ay, sir. Make me your door, then, south, your broadside west, and on the east side of your shop aloft write Mathli, Tamiel, and Baraborat. Upon the north part, Rael, Velel, Thiel. They are the names of those mercurial spirits that do fright flies from boxes. Yes, sir. And beneath your threshold, bury me a lodestone to draw in gallants that wear spurs. The rest they'll seem to follow. That's a secret, Nab. And on your stall, a puppet with a vice and a court fucus to call city dames. You shall deal much with minerals. Sir, I have at home already. Ay, I know you have arsenic, vitriol, sal tartar, argyle, alkali, cinnaper, I know all. This fellow, Captain, will come in time to be a great distiller, and give a say, I will not say directly, but very fair, at the philosopher's stone. Why, how now, Abel? Is this true? Aside to face. Good, Captain, what must I give? Nay, I'll not counsel thee. Thou hearest what well. He says, spend what thou canst. Thou art like to come to. I would give him a crown. A crown? And toward such a fortune? Heart, thou shalt rather give him a shop. No gold about thee? Yes, I have a portague. I have kept this half year. Out on thee, Nab. Slight, there was such an offer. Shalt keep it no longer. I'll give it to him for thee. Doctor, Nab prays your worship to drink this and swears he will appear more grateful, as your skill does raise him in the world. I would entreat another favour of his worship. What isn't, Nab? But to look over, sir, my almanac, and cross out my ill days, that I may neither bargain nor trust upon them? That he shall, Nab. Leave it. It shall be done against afternoon. And a direction for his shelves? Now, Nab, art thou well pleased, Nab? Thanks, sir, both your worships. Away. Exit Drugger. Why, now, you smoky persecutor of nature, now do you see that something to be done beside your breech coal and your corrosive waters, your crosslets, crucibles, and corkabites? You must have stuff brought home to you to work on, and yet you think I am at no expense in searching out these veins than following them, then trying them out? For God, my intelligence costs me more money than my share oft comes to in these rare works. You are pleasant, sir. Re-enter Dole. How now, what says my dainty dolkin? Yonder fishwife will not away, and there's your giantess, the board of Lambeth. Hard, I cannot speak with them. Not a fortnight, I have told them in a voice through the trunk, like one of your familiars. But I have spied Sir Epicure Mammon. Where? Coming along, at far end of the lane. Slow of his feet, but earnest of his tongue to one that's with him. Face, go you and shift. Exit face. Doll, you must presently make ready too. Why, what's the matter? Oh, I did look for him with the sun's rising. Marvel he could sleep. This is the day I am to perfect for him this magisterium, our great work, the stone, and yield it made into his hands, of which he has this month talked as he were possessed. And now he's dealing pieces on to way. Bethinks I see him entering ordinaries, dispensing for the pox and plaguey houses, reaching his dose, walking moorfields for lepers, and offering citizens' wives pomander bracelets as his preservative, made of the elixir. 
searching the spittle to make old boards young, and the highways for beggars to make rich. I see no end of his labours. He will make nature ashamed of her long sleep, when art, who's but a stepdame, shall do more than she, in her best love to mankind, ever could. If his dream lasts, he'll turn the age to gold. Exeunt. End of Act One.